What was your favorite event? My favorite event ever was um, probably the year I qualified for the Cross the Games in 2016. It was a thruster legless rope climb workout. And um, I knew I had it in the bag. <laughs> like I knew I was going to win. Okay, guys, welcome back to the Thanks But No podcast. My name is Meg. My name is Steph. And today we got a special treat. We do. Today is the Meg special. The uh, Megatron. Oh, no. The Megatron era. We're going to bring I it. I can't. Yeah, I am have so many questions about the name even. We're going to run it back. Yeah, we got to rewind. <laughs> bring it, bring it back. I DJ. think I just spit all over the mic. I'm not kidding. <laughs> ah. Very uh, cute. Nice. Very nice. Mm. Okay. So uh, let's debrief about your week, the convention that you went to. Um, I went to a coaching convention in Orlando um, and it was geared towards nutrition coaches, but we didn't talk nutrition at all. It was like the coaching business, a lot of gym owners, a lot of trainers, um, very awesome. A lot of podcasters. Actually, I think every single speaker there had a podcast. That's crazy. Uh, I was Makes making sense. lists, writing notes. And I was telling Meg before this, the MC stole the show. He was the MVP. Forget we, the MC. We love that. Um, not only was he super exciting to listen to, but he was listening to every motivational speaker and then would like debrief us and apply. And then he showed us a video. He must MC all over the world of him dancing on stage with Ja Rule. He's like, Ja Rule pulled me on stage. I'm not lying. And then he played the video for us on the big screens. We were dying. That's incredible. I was like, you are my spirit animal, but you're a human. <laughs> How about you? What was going down here? It was, uh, I mean, I actually, so I, I finally am starting my bike journey. Oh. So I don't know if you saw on my Instagram. Oh, I did. I clipped in on my bikes, for, on my bike for the first time. It's exciting. It's very scary. Yeah, I can see that. Because you are kind of like, if you're claustrophobic Trapped. already, and then like you, it's, it's easy to get in and out. You just have to remember to turn your heel out. But in the moment, if you're freaking out, you just eat it. Yeah. I didn't, I did not fall on the boardwalk okay that's um, good i have i have to get a new helmet like a nice biking cycling helmet but i'm excited to start i actually have a helmet that i never wear if you want to oh, try man. it i think i just bought it on amazon I'm gonna, oh darn okay i'll try it out maybe okay. i'll return the other one and try it out okay. uh so yeah i'm excited to start doing some of that some, yeah that's some exciting. outside of the gym training it's getting really nice out next I week can't next i think wait. next monday tuesday it's supposed to be like 65 yes we are dreaming of this we love that i've been counting it down since and then the last 65. six weeks till memorial day weekend so we're really close to summer oh, wow we're getting close we're almost six there weeks, huh <laughs> yikes six weeks you gotta get serious yeah time to get, time to crack down wait how was the earthquake oh my god it was so weird For, i mean where were you i was in the kitchen with tina and tina was talking and all of a sudden i didn't even really like feel it but i saw the vacuum like swaying and i was like that's so really weird like am i tripping right now <laughs> and then joanna immediately texted me it was like earthquake and i was like whoa wow she's on it it was an earthquake so yeah that was it it wasn't anything special but it is pretty insane to think that was a 4.8 and I can't imagine what a magnitude yeah. of like nine must. I think feel. what the week before there was like a seven something in Thailand. Yeah, That's sad. insane. So we had the earthquake and then we had the solar eclipse. What's next? <laughs> I on. actually loved walking on the boardwalk and seeing everyone in there. It was Amazon so. Oh, the glasses. <laughs> Someone made a milli, quick milli off yeah. that. Also, the haze over the ocean was so insane. Yeah, it was. I kind of wish we could have saw eerie. the full thing, but you know. Until next time. Until next time. Maybe another 50 years down yeah. the line. We'll make it. We'll make it. We'll, we'll be make it. We'll be here. Maybe we'll still be here. Who knows? <laughs> still podcasting. <laughs> still here. Still doing these beach chairs. Maybe they'll be upgraded by then. <laughs> Maybe we'll have a full studio by then. That would this be will sick. be our how we make our living. I would love it. I would love that too. <laughs> All right. Should we just, so should we just today, get into it? <laughs> like I said, so if you guys didn't know, Meg was professional. Is it considered professional? Um, in CrossFit and correct me if I'm speaking to this wrong, because I don't, I truly do not know anything about CrossFit. Um, many people think that I 
have partaken in it. No, I don't eat. I know nothing. <laughs> I've learned Olympic Olympic lifting um, through USAW. What is that? USAW. Mm-hmm. I feel like I said that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So I know that part of it, but like they barely spoke about CrossFit while teaching it to us. Um, so tell me from the get go how you what the CrossFit world is like. What do the CrossFit Games look like? And then your journey from your college sport into CrossFit and how you like realized you were good at it. Mm, yeah. Great question. So I played division one field hockey in college. We've talked about this before and I got lucky enough. My coach at the time was doing CrossFit at a local gym where I went to school. What year was this? This was 2013 is when I officially stepped into a CrossFit gym. Okay. And I hadn't, I didn't start competing until 2014. Okay. That was my first real year of competition, but 2013 went and took, I vividly remember this day, which I don't remember a lot of things. So like it really made an impact on my life. I went into the gym, took a Saturday kind of partner, fun workout. You're splitting reps with people. You're sweating, you're grinding, kind of like what we're doing here, honestly. Mm -hmm. And, um, I instantly drank the CrossFit Kool-Aid. I loved it. I was like, this is such an awesome community. The vibes were amazing. The people were really super, super fit and really just awesome and like wanted to get better. So I, immediately bought was bought into it and I started training using it as supplemental training to my playing field hockey obviously I couldn't commit to CrossFit then and there but I was doing it and saw myself getting fitter and faster than I'd ever had been prior to with with all of my training prior to CrossFit and I think it wasn't really anything super special I think it was just the fact that we were doing these functional movements at high intensity and it completely translated to the sport like I needed to be explosive I needed to be fast I needed to to have that speed and the power and all of the things that we were doing the lifting the so was this your senior year of college junior year going into senior year yes and what seat was this in this was in California oh in Cali Cali Kelly girl. So I did my first ever CrossFit regional, which they're not called regionals anymore, but I did my first ever CrossFit regional in 2014 in Northern California. No Cal. NorCal, NorCal. And uh, that was kind of where my journey took off. Okay. So what happens in a competition? Because I really, I know that it's like a hundred different things. So the definition of CrossFit is high intensity, high intensity functional movements, but you're not really specializing. So you have to kind of be good at all of the things. You're a non-specialist. It's not just specific to one certain thing. So in a competition, in a a typical competition, you might see um, an event, a long event, a short event, a medium event. You might see a heavy lift event. You might see a gymnastics bias event or an endurance bias event. It could really be anything. And that's, so you don't really know what you're getting. A lot of times you don't, uh, Nowadays, I think how they structure competitions is, you know, they're usually two or three days and they have a layout two or three um, events a day and they'll give you a general idea of what they are. Some events do tell you specifically what the workout is. Some don't. At the CrossFit Games, they usually don't. They'll give you a they'll give you a few of the events and they'll give you a few tips and they'll give you a few hints Mm -hmm. but usually you kind of are supposed to just prepare for the unknown that's the point of it okay so the crossfit games are one time of year one time of year okay so what was just going on the open what is that to the the crossfit games that's step one of the crossfit games the open is a worldwide competition anyone that is in any gym can do it you can sign up i think you pay 20 bucks 25 bucks and you do the competition online if you want to actually try to qualify for the next several stages you have to submit a video, it has to get reviewed okay. and judged, and then you can potentially be, I think it's top 25% now, advanced to the second stage, which is quarterfinals. And this is very different. Back in the day, it wasn't like this. It was, you have the open, you had your regional, which was... Um, okay, so that's what you went to. That's, this is the first year I went to. I think the regionals, God, I think it was 40 or 50 men, 50 women at the time. And then from there, top oh. five qualify. So my first year that I qualified, which was in 2016 for the CrossFit Games... It was five men, five women, five teams. And this was in – I was back on the East Coast by this point. Um, so this, the, this format has kind of changed over the years. Okay, because it's, it's bigger, it's, do you think? It's bigger. I think they wanted to make it more inclusive. They wanted to be able to offer more to people. Like okay. now especially – so the quarterfinals that are going to happen the next couple of weeks, the 25% is significantly more people than – what it used to be. So they're making more money that way too. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so it makes okay. sense for them. So now your first regional competition in Northern California, how did you do? Not well. 
Okay, but you were like, I want to do this. Yeah, yeah, I did not do well, but these some of these athletes have been competing for several years prior to that. Some of these people oh, wow. were like OGs, like 2007, 2008 is when they started CrossFit. So, I, you know, I was competing with some badass women and I saw that and I was instantly like, okay, that's this is the path I want to take. This is really cool. Okay. It's fun. I was getting so I had a background in gymnastics, so I was able to get a lot of the gymnastics movements down pretty easily. I had an endurance background from playing a division one sport. sport. And then from there, I just needed structure and guidance. So I was young. I didn't know what I was doing. So my year one, I was like, I'm just going to go and see how what happens. And uh, was it hard? Like, do you remember what movements were in there and wh- what you were like? I suck. There at were this. pistols. I, you know what? My my Achilles heel was, had always been pressing. OK, so I'm a much better puller. I have pretty long levers like my arms are really long. So I was a much better puller than I was a presser. So handstand pushups always been my arch nemesis, um, sh- pressing overhead stuff like was always a struggle for me. Um, there were were there rope climbs that year? I don't even remember. The my you best, were probably good at that. My be, my best events usually involved legless rope climbs, uh, any type of like pull up or bar muscle up or ring muscle up type movements, uh, and then sprint. that's from your gymnastics background that, that you're exactly, and then okay. like sprint style workouts. So workouts that are two minutes, three minutes long, I could crush. Okay. So those are like my, those are my fun ones. Wow. Mm-hmm. This is so interesting to me mm-hmm. and so many things. Have you heard of the brand caffeine and kilos? No. So it was a, one of the original brands in CrossFit and I was on their first super team, uh, which was a lot of fun too. So there's like, they had these teams back in the day, they called them super teams. They're, they're kind of coming back now. They put more structure and organization around them, but I was on a team where we were sponsored by the brand Caffeine and Kilos and we would wear their clothing and their products. And I was on a team with three, uh, two other women and then three men as well. And wow. Wait, was, so is this right off the bat? This is all off the bat. These are all the things that happened in the, like right away. the first year and a half. And you're still in California. Still in California. Okay. So now tell me, when did you move on over back to the East when Coast? When I came back, I came back in... I did not qualify in 2015 because of my gymnastics. I remember this. So I did not qualify that year for a regional event because of a handstand push-up workout. Uh. This was like the year after I was devastated. So I did not qualify. And the following year, I had a lot more structure in my training. And I actually was able to qualify for the CrossFit Games the following year. Did you have a coach? So yeah, I did have a coach. I worked with a coach. Uh, Back in the day, the name of the game was volume. And things have changed significantly since then. But when you are doing CrossFit, unfortunately... You have to do a lot of volume it's because you're you're training volume. for thing everything you can possibly think of, especially when you get to the games. So I was doing a lot of volume training. It did significantly help because I qualified the next year. I was just prepared and ready. But, you know, looking back now, I think I would have changed a few things as far as the style of training that I was doing. You uh, didn't know better. It's okay. Exactly. I didn't. And I was young. It worked. I, it did work. It worked at the time. It definitely worked. So I qualified. First ever CrossFit Games in 2016. That was on the East Coast. 2016 on the East Coast. And your coach was out of a gym. How'd you find that person? I um, had been following a games athlete that I loved for a while and met her, started training with her. And her fiance husband was her coach and asked him if he would be my coach as well. This was, you know, again, early, late 2015, early 2016. Okay. That's really hard to remember. I have to like really think about this stuff. I know. We're like, well, it's very time specific. So, and that is when I was able to, you know, again, have a more structured plan and try to qualify for the games that year. Okay. Which I did. Which you did. (laughs) And where were they? They were in Carson, California that year. Is that, I don't even know where that is in California. It's uh, Southern California. Southern. And it's kind of right outside, uh, Oh my God, what do I think? I'm blinking. Compton? It's kind of like in the hood. I was going to say. Is it, in the- uh, it was in Carson, California, and it was quite an experience, let me tell you. Oh, special guest today, everyone. Always. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Carson, California, you qualify. That is the qualifiers now? No, so that that's the games. That's the game. So Oh, so these are the games. Yeah, so I, I went through the – we don't have to talk about like how like, – I went through the qualifying process, made, gotcha, it, gotcha. made it that year in 2016 – Qualified for the CrossFit Games that were in, Car- in Carson, California. Okay. So how many CrossFit Games have you gone to? I have qualified for three. 
qualified for and three. I've been to two. The reason I did not go to the third one in 2020 was because of COVID. So I qualified. Oh, wow. Oh, that year. Man. And it was really rough for me because that year I qualified via the Open, which is the worldwide competition. So there's probably like 200 plus thousand people that, oh. that, that do it. And I was one of the top 30 women in the world that qualified. Oh, man. And because they had narrowed down the field just because of covid i got my spot taken away that year so that was that was a brutal did they have any crossfit games that year probably not they did oh they did they did so it, they did everything virtually and then they did have a, a crossfit games at the ranch which is where dave castro lives and they did a very very small condensed version of the crossfit games that year with i think five men five women oh wow yeah it was so really very really, really so small. it was like the elite group yes Yes. So, and now is it qual- is it divided into age groups? They do have age groups. The RX division is eighteen to thirty four. I don't even know this to be honest with you. It's so bad. It's like eighteen to thirty four. I think. Somewhere oh, so it's a big 30, range. Thirty. Yeah, that's RX, and they have age groups as well. Thirty five to thirty nine, forty to forty four, like etc. Like, wow. Yeah. Okay. Um. So there's some really. Fit 60 year olds. Oh, I can imagine. It's insane that they have six packs. It's wild. The fact that they're even getting, like, being, they're able to do these movements mm-hmm. is insane. It's pretty cool. It's pretty cool to see a 60 year old doing a ring muscle up. It's wild. That is insane. It's wild. I have never done one, nor can I. And they have, and they also have teenager divisions, and these teenagers are these sh- so strong. I'm, they are snatching these young 16 year old girls are snatching 200 plus pounds. Wow. It's, it's really incredible. It's truly, it has come a long way to, and to see these young females that are just so strong and so fit is, is really cool. It's very cool. Now. Okay. So who did you look up to the most, I guess, in your journey? Hmm. Who do I look? I'm not gonna know who it is, but yeah. you there just were like, like well, describe her. I guess there was actually there there was a field hockey player that had qualified, and, oh. and she was really great. Um, she had been a couple times and followed her journey a little bit. Um, uh, Anna Anna Tunacliff is she is an Olympic um, sailor and so cool. she, it's really cool and she i think she's the only american women woman to win a u.s gold medal in sailing she was insanely fit um and i went up to at one point i went up to pennsylvania and trained with her when i qualified in 2016 oh, so awesome. and just got like my ass whooped like still that's she just that's crushed awesome. me um but yeah I'll, i was very fortunate enough to be in the CrossFit space at a time when all these OG athletes were in there. So a lot of the females that no longer compete, they have kids now and, mm-hmm. you know, or they own gyms and they're, or they're on broadcasting, like these literally OGs of CrossFit. Um, and I got to meet them and, and hang out with them. And so I've developed a lot of friendships with them. Uh, Becca Voigt, another one, she's qualified like tw- 11 times. Wow. It's, it's, she's insane. Okay. So these and, are like yeah, true like athletes. true ride or die. <laughs> like they've been with the sport forever. And I was able to meet them and, and learn and grow from them, which nice. is really cool. And uh, work out with some. Exactly. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah. Okay. What was your hardest category? I know you said that pressing was hard. Yeah. I would is say there like a specific press? press any type of – so a, sh- um, a strict handstand push-up workout usually. The volume that they – so a lot of these women are shorter. Um, it's like, you know, an average height or a good height would be like between five, three, five, four. I'm five, six, but I have really long limbs. So again, like I said, pressing was hard for me. So the push up from a handstand, the the strict, yeah, the strict push up was a strict handstand push up was never fun for me. And I would say longer endurance events at the games were always really tough for me. What this, what's an example of one? We did one in 2019. I think it was a seven K rock run. And you were you would do a lap and you would add weight to the rock every single time you'd go. <laughs> oh my And you have some of these women that I mean, there are some women that are so fit aerobically. Emily Rolf, I'm gonna name her because she she like beats men on running workouts. Wow. All the time. It, she is very, very, very good at running. And um I think she lapped me like twice. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh yeah it's that humbling it was it's always humbling that's the best part about the crossfit games like you can be fit and it's, i love that because the community is when you ha- are in a gym 
those people, those members think you're so fit and you laugh because you're like, you have no clue like how humble like, I got left three how times. humbled you get when you go to the CrossFit Games and you compete against some of these people. Okay, so that is a really hard uh I don't even know. I was gonna say sport in general, but yeah. that's like just a piece of what right. the competition looks like. Those events were definitely tough for me, the endurance, the long endurance based events. I always hated the ruck events. Um, and then like strict handstand push-up workouts would, would be my kind of my Achilles heel. Okay. Now give me a workout with pull-ups or bar muscle-ups or legless rope climbs. Really? Just- so now, so how were the athletes that like w- lapped you? Was she good at that too? Yes. Yes. Like, so, I mean like, yes, you're still well-rounded, but again, you, you usually knew which athletes would do really well in events and which wouldn't. And like, you know, no one's afraid to admit that they, they had an Achilles heel or they, the, there's things that they needed to practice or work on. And the broadcasters would always be like, Oh, you know, here it th- goes. Yeah. Here she goes. She's not good at this one at this event. Um, oh, God. so yeah, like you would, you would usually know, I was definitely known for being a really great puller in the sport. So I, I had a very good legless rope climb. I had good pull-ups. I had good bar muscle ups, stuff like that. Um, and sprints. So like we, every year there's always some type of either sled sprint or just a straight up like 90 second sprint on a turf field and i love those okay. those were like a home run for like, me. Ooh, yes i was like Let's. Really? people i mean i've literally i spoke to people who have been there was one workout in 2019 it was a sled push down the turf 15 bar muscle ups and a sled push back it was a 90 second workout i had people tell me that was the worst event they've ever done in their life oh wow and i, I was like see a lot of people throwing up from that 100 it's, it's a straight up lactic acid you hit your threshold you're just hanging on for your life I love those. I thrive in those. <laughs> I feel like that's like part of the gymnastics again, coming back because it's every quick movement. And explosive. Well, wait, how yeah. much does the sled have to be, have to weigh? It was empty. It was empty. It was an, it, Everything was very light. The point of it was to, to red go line, as fast as to you red can. line and go as fast as you can. Yeah. Like pretty much reach death. Yeah, exactly. Awesome. And people, people would be like, I, that was the worst work I'd ever done. I'm like, really? I could think of many more. Like I more. could do it way more. I could do it four more times if you ask I me. I could think of plenty more that were worse than that. That is wow. So they really touch everything, literally everything, literally. which is almost like annoying, but yeah. also very cool because the champion is a real totally. I want champion. one really cool thing that they always do too is they uh, Rogue always introduce introduces some type of new piece of equipment. So the years that I was there, we did um, the snail. <laughs> And oh. it, it's a giant hay barrel. It looks, it's obviously not, it's made of rubber and whatever. And it's filled inside with sand or pellets or something. And so when you push it, it rolls back oh against you. God. And so you'd have to push it down the turf. I want to look this up. It, I feel- it was actually very, very cool. Um, and that was a fun little piece of, a, of equipment they introduced. And then the other year that I went, we had the opportunity to travel, back, even though it was in Carson, California, we had the opportunity to travel back to the ranch, which is where everything, the CrossFit game started in 2007. And it was like their 10 year. Where is the ranch? It's in, it's a little bit more North. Okay. It's in California. It's in California. Yeah. Okay. yeah. It's, it's Dave Castro's ranch. And, um, we did a whole day of events there, which was, oh, wow. which was so, so How many people? It's the same this amount, 40 exclusive? men, 40 women. Yeah. We, they, um, flew us up. We were on a bus. We did the, the day and then we flew back and we also had a blackout that day. I think the airlines had a blackout. So we were delayed. It was insane. It was like, it was, I really do black this stuff out because it was such an insane experience. It's awesome, though. I <laughs> it's love so it. so crazy. Wait, so when did your nickname come about? Megatron. That came Megatron. Out, that came out in college, actually, believe it or not. I had a teammate oh. in college that, Casey, shout out, that um, I don't remember how it even, how it started. I think it was, we were in the way. With the song? With, did the song ignite it or was it before the song? It was before the song. Was that Nicki this Minaj? Was, yeah, Nicki Minaj was, this was after. Nicki Minaj was after. So Megatron was before. So I think Nicki Minaj wrote that song about me. Oh. <laughs> well, isn't it? <laughs> it was based, I think she was based. From Transformers. Yeah, it was based upon the movie Transformers. And Not that I've seen it, but really? my friend has told me It's that. not a great movie, but you know, it's like. A- I've seen nothing. Uh. So I would be in the weight room and uh, I would be trained like a robot. So they just started calling me Megatron. <laughs> oh my <laughs> God. Megatron. Do um, you, you go someplace when you train and that's why they said that? Yeah, probably. Yeah. Dark place. Don't talk to me. Right. Exactly. Don't make eye contact. And that carried over very well into CrossFit. Which is perfect because I wanted to talk about what your training looks like. Mm. 
Yeah. So, so when you hired the coach, did you stick with that coach the whole time? No, I changed coaches um, in the middle 2018, beginning of 19, maybe. I did uh, Dave Charbonneau, Forged by Zeus. He was like the best coach I've ever had. Love him to death. Uh, and he really helped develop me into, I, into my best self as an athlete, I think. Unfortunately, injuries and stuff happened, which we can talk about. But um, yeah, so the structure of training. <laughs> it started off, like I said, early on in the days to just a lot of volume. Okay. And... Just so, like, what did your – were you doing, like, one time a day, twice a day, three times Usually a day? Usually two times a – so when, you know, depending on the, the time of season, if you're training for the games, we'll talk about that. Training for the games, you're usually doing two to three days, two, two to three times a day. A cumulative volume, probably five to six hours of training, I would wow. say, depending on the day. Um and this, you know, that's not always super high intense intensity. Right. You have a, a lifting session, you have a, a longer zone two endurance session, and you might have a quick workout. So you're doing, you're hitting and touching on multiple things, but it's spread out throughout the day because just like in a CrossFit competition, you are, it's spread out throughout the day, throughout the weekend, and you have multiple events in the day. So you have to fully like cool down, right. re-warm up, and then, you know, go from there. Okay. Okay, so maybe we should just touch on, like, the CrossFit game training? Yeah, let's do that. Okay, so now how many months out? So you qualify, like, really, depending on when your regional or when your semifinal, that's what they call them now, competition is. It's not – you don't have a ton of training time between oh. that and the games. I think the last – Wait, t- rewind, though. Mm-hmm. Are you training for the Open – first like are you i guess ba- basically your training throughout the year is mostly in the gym okay it's not as much volume if you qualify for the crossfit games you do have to take your training outside you start i mean oh. nowadays again these these athletes are doing this full time so they're still training outside the gym a lot they're swimming once a week they're doing their long endurance runs but if you're just like a normal like especially back in the day it was just it was different so you would train a certain way in the gym, and then when you qualified for the games, you would do more outdoor style training, okay, you know, running, swimming, biking, all that kind of stuff. Okay, all right. So now you qualified, and let's dig into that. Mm-hmm. So how many months do you have until the actual games? A month. Oh my god. <laughs> maybe, maybe a yeah. Like it really just depends. I mean, it's it, go time, it, baby. It is. It really is go time. So for that month, mm-hmm. no wonder why you're doing three times a day. Mm-hmm. You're training. You're just trying to pack in as much as you can in that month that you have, and you obviously have to taper the week before too, and like right. make sure you're not, you know, dealing with any injuries and fueling yourself properly. So you do your sessions throughout that time. You're doing a lot of more um, aerobic style, outdoor style, because again, you're building your your baseline throughout the year in the gym, you know, with the training that you're doing, or you're hoping to at least. Mm-hmm. And then once you get to the games, it's like, okay, we got to take our training outdoors. We got to make, you know, do things out more out, outside of the box and hope for the best when we get to the actual competition. Okay. So how many calories were you eating mm-hmm. while training per day? I honestly, I wasn't even counting, but because I was just eating so much food, I can assure you probably an upwards of like three, th- three to 4,000. I mean, that was going to be my guess. Um, um carbohydrate, uh, carbohydrate count 400 grams. Wow. Um, and I, and I was like 10% body fat because I was just doing so much exercise and in genetics genetics too but so well you have a, a whole exercise. background in gymnastics to and my par- college I mean, if you yeah. see my parents too like they were both built athletes so okay thank you mom and dad thanks um, mom and dad a lot of protein a ton of carbohydrates and like not even like always good har- carbohydrates you're eating no, you're eating you candy. are just hungry you're all eating. the talk about hungry all the time now i can only imagine that you have no clue. i trained for a triathlon um and you know i was working out twice a day for that and this is strict cardio. Mm-hmm. And all I could think about was food. I'm like, okay, this isn't like small. It wasn't even a long triathlon. It was an Olympic. But still, I was nonstop hungry. Totally. So I can't even imagine like lifting a, t- a zone two and then followed by another. It truly is a full-time job to do it. And especially nowadays because, again, these, these athletes are getting paid. Back in the day, the sponsorships weren't as big. But these athletes are getting paid and it is a full-time job to eat, sleep, drink, CrossFit. That's it. That's it. I believe it. I believe it. Um, what did you love training the most? I genuinely enjoyed 
getting outside and doing those like the swimming because again in the when you're in the gym all day every day it gets very repetitive Mm -hmm. it is monotonous it's not always fun so when you qualify for the games it's like that weight is lifted off your shoulders you're like all right I did it now I can have some fun and like get outside of the gym and do more things that I'm not used to doing so those were those were definitely like the the more fun periods because there's a lot less stress okay I mean again if I were Tia Claire to me and I was trying to win the games which to be honest I never really thought I would ever win so I didn't train like that and uh, I'm sure for her it was not any it was probably more stressful but for me when I qualified I was like all right I'm gonna have some fun now do things more outside of the gym and and you know see where it goes was your coach like side by side with you or was it he like programmed you and then you would check in with him? a lot of times yes he because because he went to the same gym as me oh amazing so when I was at CrossFit Queens he was there and um a lot of times you know he would, I would definitely check in with him every day. We would text about something, the workout, see where I'm at. I also was lucky enough to have a couple other CrossFit Games athletes. They didn't live in the area. I, I did have a group of, of athletes that I trained with in the area, but the ones that I was like really checking my scores with frequently that qualified for the games, they would, we would go back and forth. We'd have oh, a group chat nice. all day. So you had a little like community it was, build. It was really nice. The community was great. The people that I had around me, I mean, I had uh, some of the people I trained with were on a team, a CrossFit Games team. Um, and we would just throw down. It was like the most fun ever, but Dave would usually, Dave's also very fit, like really, really like sneaky fit. So he would throw down with us a lot and he, he programmed, he was one of the smartest programmers I think ever, in my opinion, just based upon knowing each athlete so well and programming, you know, specifically to them. Um, so he would definitely be there most days or if not there, you know, we'd be texting or chatting. Um, and I also had an endurance coach that would work side by side with us okay. as well. So again, once we started training for the games, we'd get in the pool with him. We'd go out for a run with him. Oh, nice. Um, they, they were like side by side with you. These yeah, are the best. I mean, this, it really is. And now you see if you are, if again, if you're training for the cross the games, you have communities around the country. Like you have groups of people Like there's a, the proven team, which is Tia Claire's team. They're in Tennessee and they have a whole headquarters and everyone trains out of there now. Wow. It's incredible. It, the sport is she has re- like a full fan base that she has like over a million followers. Like, I mean, the, the sport has grown so tremendously from what it was to, to, to what it is now. And seeing all these brands that, that now have like been able to like cultivate this crazy um, training atmosphere for athletes. Like if you, if you want to be a good athlete, you would go there and you, right. you would literally live there and commit your life to it and hope that you make it. It's pretty wild. Well, that is wild. That is a whole other animal <laughs> mm-hmm. in itself. Okay. Where do I want to go with this? Do I want to talk about your support? Like, was your coach, if you're having a bad day of training, like, was your coach there to light you up and like the support that he gave you, was it like, get your shit together or was it like, <laughs> listen, you're better than this? Like a it was a little bit speaker. of both, a little bit of both. And I think it's, it's needed depending on, you know, where you're at in your journey, because I would often say I'm always very self-critical. He would be like, okay, let's be realistic here. What can you win? Maybe what can you, you know, mitigate damage on on the events and what can you go out there and destroy people at so we would always come up with a game plan leading up to events of things that you know i need to be careful with things that i should be destroying and going full speed and not really having a game plan just hoping for the best because those are events that i should win okay and then ones that like all right we're like all right meg you know we're gonna break this up because you're not great at this thing okay which is i think needed at times you know and uh you, you always want – they're going to hype you up because that, that's their job too, and especially because most of us are our own worst critics. But I think it's also very good to have someone who's realistic with where you're at and be like, listen, you're not that good at this. or Not that you're not that good, but there are people that are better than you, and we got to figure out how to be able to stay with them so that you're not you know, getting no reps by a judge or do, making stupid mistakes. Wow. So, okay. yeah. Who is your biggest supporter? Ooh. My mom, she's she's oh, insane. She would, I mean, both my parents are incredible and they offer support in so many different ways. But my mom is the type of person to like drop everything. She'll be like, where is your competition? Drop it, fly there. She's there. She's there. She's going to take me to the grocery store, buying me my fruit snacks. She's like truly the best. I'm very, very lucky to have her. Awesome. Love. I really do love that. Yeah. It was, it was a, it's a, 
it's a long journey yeah it's, like looking back on it it really was a long journey there's like so so many moving parts I know. and i it's you, really you are interesting really, you're truly nothing without the support system that you do have around you and i was very very lucky and blessed to have that when i was competing and i definitely did not take it for granted because you know I mean, this is a rocky road, too. Mm -hmm. So, like, now looking at the competition, were you just fired up by them? Were you intimidated by most of them? Uh, my first few years, yes, definitely. Like, I, I, it, it felt very hard to tell myself, hey, like, I belong here. And I think a lot of people struggle with that in any sport, you know. Like a little imposter syndrome? Yeah, like, you're a rookie. You're like, man, did I really make it because I'm good enough or did I make it because there's a, a fluke and I definitely thought that my first couple of years but then as I started really developing like into the, the athlete that I wanted to be I was like no like I belong here I've worked my ass off and it's go time and I even now I'm like looking back on things like my last year I think I started to pull back because of injuries and and but also I think I started just to not believe in myself anymore I really wow. I really think that like I just mentally checked out truly I mean it's wear and tear uh, even on your mental to I mean like I literally I always make this comparison the best athletes in the world yes they are training intensely they're training hard they're they're working day in and day out but usually when you're at the top level, they're all training similarly. The ones who win have the best mindset. They know they're champions. I feel as if I've read that in multiple books. Have you read Winning by Tim Grover? I've read part of it. Yeah, it is. I mean, it's that is exactly what he says without saying it. And he is the one that you call when you're starting to doubt yourself. Mm -hmm. And that's why he's worked with Kobe Bryant yeah. and the top Michael Jordan, yeah. you know, the best of the best. They, I mean, you, even just hearing them, these people talk, I mean, even relating it to the sport of CrossFit. So the best, the best athletes are like, yeah, I came here to win. That's it. Matt Frazier, he won five times, even Tia once it, she, you could see how she changed and developed when she started to win and trusting herself and being like no like i know i'm the best that's I'm it best. that's it I'm have you best. had a conversation with her ever I, um not i mean like yes yes or him michael frazier is that uh, my uh matt frazier matt sorry no no I've, i mean i've chatted with both of them i've competed with both of them um i was never super close with either of them um yeah they're, they're uh, the other thing is too when you're in competition mode you're not really there to chat with people. It's very hard to not be just focused. And a lot of times you come off kind of mean because of it. Well, I understand We're, we're that. all in our own. Or yeah, like I'm in, in the, I'm getting in my zone We're right in now. our zone. I, yes. Again, your job is to make sure you do the event to your best, the best of your ability. Go back, fuel yourself, sleep, take a nap, whatever you need. Like you're it just is a little it, robotic. It's a robot. Megatron was yeah. in full gear. Yep. So it's really hard to develop relationships in competition you're more likely to develop them outside of competition okay that makes sense yeah i think that's normal in yeah, any sport definitely you're not going to go up to your opponent and be like hey how you doing today right. like tell me something good how are you today what, yeah. what, what do you want to win today they're like what? leave me alone <laughs> leave me alone i'm uh I'm literally racing against you in 10 minutes leave me alone <laughs> <laughs> don't talk to, don't look at me <laughs> what was your pre-game prep like what was mm. your your playlist what was the top song you needed to listen to before if you even listen to music i usually so i usually did listen to music i would put on Nicki minaj that was always my thing i would make sure i got so wherever the competition was usually i would find a coffee shop get a flat white which is just espresso and whole milk delicious drink that um a few hours before i would uh go back to my room set myself like make sure i'm eating set myself up put on my playlist Usually I would sit down and like have 10 minutes of focus work. So I'm like visualizing what the events are for the day, how I'm going to execute them. Either I'm chatting with my coach or I'm, you know, laying there by myself and just like closing my eyes and just visualizing what my goals were for the day. Then I put on my playlist, fucking hype myself up and we're going. Let's so go. <laughs> wow. I feel it right now. Yeah. <laughs> Wait. So when you're doing the visualization, so when do you get the, pres they call it a prescription, right? Like what the actual workout is oh, for the cross. Like when they tell you what, like when they give it to you. I mean, yeah. Like how far in advance, do you know what they are, what the events are going to be. Again, it depends. Sometimes they'll, they'll give you buildups like a few weeks ahead of time and they'll, they'll release the workouts to the public. But a lot of times what happens is you finish an event. This is specifically at the games. You finish an event, they'll bring you out to the floor and then they'll tell you what it is. And then within 30 minutes, you're going out and doing it. 
So what is this? The Hunger Games too? <laughs> Basically, yes, <laughs> it is the Hunger Games. <laughs> that's wild. kind of like the the, fun the vibe, of, the vibe of it, the fun of it. Like that's that's what you're supposed. You know to what? Do. We're actually gonna make you uh, walk on fire today. No, they literally would be like, okay, um, so this year we're introducing parallel bars. And they'd bring them out to the floor and they'd demo it, and then they're like, all right, twenty minutes, we're gonna go. Oh, and you're like, cool, sounds good. Okay, uh, coach, it's pretty wild. What it's, do I do? It's, yeah, you're like, uh, how do I do that? What do we ever practice this? <laughs> Hoping for the best. Wow. Okay. Um, so Nicki Minaj, that's a nice little pregame visualization. Like, mm-hmm. so in the visualizations now, are you like, I'm going to win this mother effort and then I'm going Dep- to do depending my best on, in yeah, this one. Yeah. Depending on the event for sure. Like I, I mean, it again is really hard to hype yourself up when you, the nerves that you get, I mean, you've been, competed, you understand it is not fun. You cannot eat. You have to force yourself to eat because yeah. you're so oh stressed gosh. out. I will say that is definitely one of the hardest things about competition. As fun as it is, that stress that you have to take on during the however many days it is, is so brutal. How many days is it usually? When I did it, it was four. I think they're usually three usually well it depends four is more they usually go enough. wednesday or either thursday they, they have a wednesday a break thursday friday saturday sunday or maybe it's thursday break saturday it just depends i'm really there's okay. usually you say three days usually 11 to 10 to 12 events it's a lot of events it's packed in it's a lot of volume how many events per day well, like what's the max? two to three but, okay um and again they you know they would make sure it's either like a longer endurance event they usually wouldn't do like two long endurance events back to back that'd be really mean so they'd do like a long endurance event maybe a short sprint or maybe it's like a long endurance event a lift event and then a workout spread out throughout the day when you say workout that's going to be like a metcon a metcon yes okay. correct yeah a metcon so it could be like a say it's like a 30 minute endurance event then you have a lift event, which could be like 10 minutes and it's just a, it's focused on the Olympic lift or maybe it's a – Just com- one. Or it's a complex. Maybe okay. it's like ma- – uh, maybe you get like three attempts at a clean and jerk and three attempts at a snatch and like you're on the floor and you have to wait for each athlete to go. Like I they've see. done the styles like that before. And this is like what? To max out? To max out. Exactly. Gotcha. And then at the end of the day, they'll be like, okay, we're going to finish with um, a Metcon. It's going to be a 10-minute Metcon or 10-minute four-time workout and here's the movements. And they'll, okay. They'll tell you what the movements are. So something like that. I see. Gotcha. 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 Okay. What was your favorite event? My favorite event ever was um, probably the year I qualified for the CrossFit Games in 2016. It was a thruster legless rope climb workout. And um, I knew I had it in the bag. <laughs> like I knew I was going to win. That's awesome. And um I went out there. I remember I spoke with my coach that year. I had this really cool video that he made too. And I remember speaking to my coach and being like, yeah, he's like, you're going to win this. And I'm like, fuck yeah, I am. Sick. That's <laughs> and sick. I went out there and I won He's it. like, oh, we got yeah, this yeah. one. He's like, and I, oh man, what a, what a really, really cool way to finish my first year ever qualifying. Like that was, I mean, I was young. I was 2016. I yeah. had no clue I was going to qualify. I really surprised myself and um, it was sick. Whatever. It's all it takes. Yeah. That's, um, what was, what's your least favorite? Obviously I have to ask that. I mean, definitely probably a, a handstand push up. I, I, the year that I went to the games in 2019, I told you this, I, we had a workout called Mary and it had a uh, handstand pushups in it. A lot of volumes, a 20 minute AMRAP, which is a lot of volume of handstand pushups and pull-ups and all this stuff. And, uh, I had rhabdo. I for sure. I for sure got rhabdo. Oh my god! I for, Mary, I, I Mary. Damn it! I literally could not for like not even kidding you. Four days, put my arm past this. Like I, I had to like go like this, and I was like, ah. oh my! It was god. excruciating. So yeah, I think I had a mild form of rhabdo there for sure. I'm sure there was a little something. Uh, nothing something. like crazy. Obviously, like it's very common when you're lifting and doing these high intensity workouts, but it was not fun. Let me tell you. So yeah, handstand pushups not not my most fun. Yikes. When did you start getting very popular on Instagram? Ooh, the IG. Hmm. Wait, how many followers do you have right now? I guess I think like forty-one thousand, but I've lost. Unfortunately, I've lost a lot. I've when you stop competing, you're no longer relative. So, did you have to announce it on? So, let's go back to when you acquired mm-hmm. all of these followers. Mm-hmm. God, I don't even remember to be honest with you. I think just being in the community and uh, like when you qualify for the games, CrossFit posts you and they have over millions of, you know, ah, they have millions of followers. So people just start chiming people in. People just start, it's like an, a more of like a, it was an authentic kind of follower gain. And um, 
just based upon being in the sport at an early time. And I think being in the sport for the, like the period of time that I was, I mean, I was in there from 2014 to 2021, yeah, that's essentially. A long time. So it's a lot, a lot of time to meet people. It also really helped having a brand. I owned Wags and Weights at the time. Oh, yeah. So I had that that clothing brand that people could identify me with. I'd always be wearing it out on the floor. And um, I think just, yeah, being in the community for that long was – I was able to, to build an Instagram following due to – and, you know, having the name Megatron was always helpful. So like that having that, like, visual people really enjoyed. Um, so I gained – yeah, I just gained it throughout the years, I think, you know, and competing with – on teams and with other people that had bigger followings too. So getting tagged and mentions and all gotcha. that kind of stuff. And were you, did you feel pressure to like show up for all these followers now that they were on there? Honestly, no. It's, it's funny now because looking back, I feel like I have more pressure on myself now because I'm like, okay, I don't do CrossFit anymore. These people are just going to continue to unfollow me. And I have lost a ton of followers because of that. And what was your peak number? Do you remember? Uh, probably like 45 maybe. Okay. And I haven't done, I haven't lost a ton, but, but I think, you know, people like, again, it's not like personal. It's just, you're no longer relative to the sport and you're doing different things. Life moves on. So uh you start to lose people like in people's interest because they're like well she doesn't do cross anymore i don't give a shit did about you her. have to announce that when you retired i did actually uh officially announce when i was like, did you cry i probably cried yeah but like on instagram? no not on instagram come on i mean just i was sad i i had a yeah my uh, well i could my, totally my, see my that final being a year fuck. yeah my final year of competition i p- had to pull out of a comp of a competition oh. out of an event because of my knee it was just really really irritated and i was like you know what it's just not worth it because i know i'm not going to qualify because i'm not at my peak anymore i'm not really feeling like i'm fit as fit as i was the the previous year what year was this this was 2021 Okay, so now you're like so, so. 2020, I had qualified. That was my peak year. I was like crushing it. Had the knee thing going on. Still was not feeling great. Leading up to the competition in 2021, I was not able to train the way I wanted to, just because I was working around injuries. And that was like the year when I when I realized I'm like, you know what? I don't know if I if I have it anymore. I don't know if it's if it's for me anymore. And you kind of if have it's that worth it. Yeah, too. you have that realization. You're like, I don't think it's worth it. Like, I want to not have a knee replacement right now. Yeah. <laughs> I'd, I'd prefer that. So, so when did the injuries start? I think they were always, I mean, I think they started way prior to CrossFit. I'm you sure know, they're I, from gymnastics. Yeah, gymnastics. We really want to dig. Gymnastics, cro- uh, field hockey, all the pounding and the running. And I've been an athlete since I was, I don't know, six years old right. and I'm 31 now going on 32. Like it, it's a lot. People are like, oh, you're only 31. Like, no, it's a, my training age. I have so much wear and tear on my body from being a competitive athlete for so mm-hmm. many years. And I think it's just kind of a, having that – now finding that balance and realizing, okay, maybe I can't do all these things that I used to be able to do, but, like, what are my goals now in life? So things just change. Okay. So th- the biggest injury would be what? Your knees. My knees. Yeah, my knee. My left knee. I had it. So my, I'm very lucky that I've only had one surgery, which was a knee scope. Uh, I had a cartilage flap tear on my left knee. I mean, if you were to look any doctor that has spoken to me, and I don't love diagnoses as because I think it makes you very mental, and I think a lot of people can live with injuries that don't need to be fixed right mm-hmm. now. But um, I have just a ton of wear and tear and arthritis in my knees at this point, so mm-hmm. very little cushion. So a lot of things that are impactful are just like you know they're not comfortable anymore. Running right. and sprinting and jumping it's just not it doesn't feel good anymore mm-hmm. <laughs> you know so it's like for me it's is it really worth it to do those things and suffer through pain not really especially if i'm not really enjoying it like i used right, to right right so yeah i think it's just picking and choosing my my uh poison at this point would you say um 2020 after like they canceled they kind of canceled the games mm-hmm. i guess we could mm-hmm. say um was that like an eye opener for you like oh my gosh was it uh, what am i going to do or was it is this think, the universe telling me something? You know, I, is think this... it, I think it was kind of a little bit of both because I, again, when I qualified, so you qualified for 2020 at the end of 2019 and, um, oh. I was my fittest. I think I'd ever been. I was like, this is, this is it. Like I, I'm going to do really well this year. And then having that taken away, <laughs> oh, Bay. Hi, Bay. having that taken away from me, I think really was an eye opener mm-hmm. and, and, uh, a little bit of a. Like I was very butt hurt by it. Yeah, I wouldn't Unintent- you know, I just it, a lot of people had their spots taken away. So I know people felt very similarly to 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 what I felt, but it's like what a letdown. Yeah, totally. It's like wow, I worked that hard and they just ripped it away from me. And that was that was brutal for me. So 
I think I was already mentally a little checked out going Mm -hmm. into the next year. And then the injuries that I was dealing with were not going away. And I think, I think the stress also definitely did not help. So I was having these injuries and then I was stressing about the injuries and I just, it was like a vicious cycle, a vicious cycle. That's that ugly cycle. So yeah, by the time I got to my final competition, I think I was just, I was so mentally burnt out that I, it, I sh- probably shouldn't have done it, to be honest with you. I, you know, shoulda, coulda, woulda. I don't regret. Right. I don't regret it, but um, it was definitely a lesson learned. When was that? The final competition. The June of 2021. June of 2021. Yeah. Okay. And that was uh prior to the Spartan Games. Dun, 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 dun. Oh. I thought that. The- oh, so you already had a knee injury going into this. Oh yeah. I my my body. I've I've been struggling for. Long time, quite okay. some time. So, if you guys don't know this, the Spartan Games are what really put the injuries on the bod. Yeah, I think. Well, I think it was what I like to say it was the straw that broke the camel's back. These injuries were already there, but the volume of running that I had done during that period really inflamed me for quite some time and sent me on a <laughs> an interesting journey. Right. So, okay. <laughs> so these r- correct me if I'm wrong. This was you were invited to. Mm-hmm. Um, how many people? I think there was only like six women, six men. It was pretty wild. And they're all athletes from all over the world in different sports. A lot of them were more endurance based sports. So there was, I competed against a high rocks champion, a Spartan games champion, really, really fit, sick people. Okay. So this is like an exclusive invite. Mm -hmm. Pretty freaking awesome. It was a really, listen, I know the injuries were not great, but it was, I would have gone. It was a pretty amazing experience. The things that I was able to, I mean, I did a four hour mountain bike on the side of a mountain on big bear. When would I ever do that? I mean, I have no idea. Also I, like, how did you do that? But also I just want to let everyone know the Spartan games. It's like the Spartan races invited her, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Okay. That yeah, brand. So the Spartan games. And it's, it's like uh Spartan Spartan race is the one who who puts it on it's like a production it's all over youtube if you guys ever want to go check it out but it was 10 events over a series uh, of four days and everything you could think of endurance based we did so much running more running than i've ever done i ran up a mountain a half marathon in a weight vest <laughs> how much did the the vest weigh? I don't even, 14 probably 20 i don't even it doesn't know even matter. it doesn't even matter it was it was up a mountain i was climbing a mountain that's insane um we did this really cool tactical style event where we we're shooting guns and running and dragging dummies and like it was Whoa. really cool we did an, a swim event in the coldest water i've ever been in in oh my, my life God. it was listen the it was an amazing experience Great. and then what happened oh god Oh no, the trauma. I, you know, I don't actually really ever know. I don't, I don't have like a specific injury diagnosis. It just happened that when I came back home, my knees basically swelled up so badly and I got so much inflammation through them. Again, I think just from the overuse injury um, for like six. This was in both of them though. Both knees this time. Six to eight months, I physically could not fully straighten my leg. That's I can't it even... was so traumatic. It was so traumatic. How were you even walking? I was functioning? barely walking. I was barely walking. It, it was wild. And, you know, it sent me on a very down, <laughs> bad downward spiral. You could barely move. Yeah, it was not great. It was it was not great. And that was actually also during the time that I we moved to Long Beach. So thank God I found a community. Oh, wow. Thank God. <laughs> this community saved me. But yeah, wow, was... that's a lot at once, though. It was. To come here, like, you're not really known, and then you mm-hmm, can't can mm-hmm, walk. Mm-hmm. I'm, I hate people, that I'm people, laughing. I'm sorry. People were definitely like, why is she walking like that? <laughs> I definitely would have Weirdo. said that. I didn't know them yet. I didn't know them. Like, <laughs> who's that fit girl, and why is she walking Why like is she that? walking like she's got something up her ass? <laughs> okay, so, wow. This is, like, a long journey it's here. It's a long journey, but it's a fun journey. Oh, what's your favorite snacky to eat during Ooh, the games? My favorite snack. Mm, probably gummy bears, especially the the Whole Foods brand. Have you had those? The, no. The 365 gummy bears. They're so chewy. Oh, yum. Have you had the ones from Trader Joe's? Because those are really chewy. Okay, yeah, I, I eat those. Like, I, It's not good, actually. I got to stop buying them because I, I have no self-control when they're in my house. Like, I cannot. They're so, so they much have, better than I imagined. They have the best gummies, like all yeah, types of gummies. I don't understand. Seasonal gummies. I'm like, stop doing that to me. Leave it. I can't. They, every season so has I, a different one. I cannot get them anymore. Okay. I'm cut off. Tell me. If you see me with them. And the cinnamon sugar almonds are still there. Why are they still there? I don't know. Why? If you haven't tried them, don't do it. Don't get You'll them. be trapped Don't for get life. the cinnamon sugar almonds. They're so delicious. <laughs> 
Oh, were you sponsored at all? Mm. I had a few sponsorships. Yes, yeah. some um, supplement brands, some uh, energy drink brands. It, it was basically just like you get sponsored by the company. They pay you a set amount, or maybe they're paying you in product. Oh, that's awesome. And then you make posts on your Instagram account. So this was like before influencers really kind like of existed. yeah it was kind of like a well you were an start. athlete it was a start of inf- of being an influencer you're, you're getting you're an athlete being sponsored by this company you'd wear their products if you're at an event and you know the exchange was either money or product whatever it might be it was pretty simple nothing crazy I did I was I had a, um an agent when I was competing as well I still have one now we, it's it's different because you know the sponsorships I'm looking for are not in the CrossFit right. space. Um, it's more like influencer style products, like facial products, <laughs> but, uh, yeah. So a, an agent would work with me and help, you know, come up with negotiations for, with, with brands and things like that. So it was fun. All right. What have you learned the most from the entire experience? Wow. <laughs> it's a loaded question. I think I've just learned that I am capable of things that I never thought I could do. Truly. If you don't believe it, like you really, you really have to believe it and like enjoy it because if you're not, it's just not worth it. The things that I had done, like looking back, I'm like, people dream of doing those things and will never be able to. And I think I did take it for granted at times, especially when I had these injuries. I was like, you know what? I'm really upset that I have these like, oh, woe is me. Almost like kind of like a pity Mm -hmm. party. And it happens, you know, when you don't know how to deal with the repercussions of being a competitive athlete and, and literally using your body to its like maximum potential and knowing that like you might not come out with you know fresh on the other side or without mm-hmm. without injuries so I think I did take that for granted and a lot of time for a while I think I, I I was saying like oh I regret doing this I regret it and now I'm like you know what no I don't regret that it was an incredible experience one that I will be able to tell for the rest of my life one that many people walking this earth will never be able never. to do i will never be able to do that i will never experience anything like this like you were in a world a completely different world yeah you were zoned in like you trained alone mostly right oh i, I did have people that would train with me but yes mo- i mean most of it was alone because i was t- t- competing solo and um yeah i mean i think it was such an incredible journey and uh, it, it developed me into the person I am today. Like I, it made me a hard worker. It made me disciplined. It made me dedicated to whatever I am doing, whether it's in sports or in life. And, you know, I, I can't take like what I did made me who I am. So I don't regret anything. I love it. No regrets. No regrets. No regrets. No regrets. Would you do it again? Ooh. I, you know what? I would do it again. I would. Yeah. It, I, it's taken me a lot to really say that. But I would do it again. I would I would not – it's so emotional because it was such a big part of my life and then it kind of almost got stripped away from me with because of the injuries. But I would do it again. The connections that I made, the people that I met, the body that I built, I would do that again. It, it was worth it 100%. Even though I'm – these injuries that I have now. But it's cool because I'm now on this other side of it where I'm like, okay, I'm experiencing new things and trying new things. And I don't have to necessarily be the best at it. I can just put myself outside of my comfort zone and grow that way. Mm-hmm. And I mean, I'm not training to win something anymore and that's okay. But it's, you know, because of all of that foundational strength and endurance and, and skill that I learned from being a CrossFit athlete, it still translates to, to every new thing that I'm trying. So I would do it right. again. Tra- tra- all it transfers. made me the fittest person I've ever been. So Hands do you, down. so now that you're, you have all these injuries and stuff and we're, we are wrapping up, so we'll keep it a little short, but do you look back at that body that you had and you're like, Oh God, I was so much more fit. I was so all much stronger. I, I mean, I've so gotten, much- I've gotten better in the last like year, but all the time. Yeah. It's, yeah. That's hard. I mean, you're again, I, my lowest body fat percentage, which is not good. It's, it's was not it, even healthy. It's not healthy, but it, it was just what my genetics and how much I was training was 10%. Like it was very low. I was shredded. Did you period? No. You didn't? No. I'm shocked. I know. I was shredded and I was doing things that people, again, would only dream, could only dream of doing. I had extreme body dysmorphia when I stopped competing because I went from training five to six hours a day to one and walking or whatever it might be. And I was like, 
you know. Were you, did your body fat percentage shoot up right away? I mean, I'm sure it did. I haven't checked it in a long time. Your hunger, was that the same? Yes, which is yeah, so annoying. I knew it. I knew it. After so I did annoyed. the triathlon, I mean, again, much less of a scale. But after I was like, well, am I supposed to go back to the gym now? Yeah. It actually, I think, messed up my body a little. Like my iron iron levels got all I think my I think my um, cortisone and my CNS have been fried since competing. Like I don't think, and my testosterone, like I think everything's like messed up. A little off. Just a a little. little. Um, But yeah, I had extreme body dysmorphia and I still have it. Like I get, I have guilt eating. It's not fun. I've, again, and I've learned to develop balance and like I like to go out and have a drink or go out and have a cookie but like when I was competing those things I could do and I never thought twice because no, I was because just you're burning 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 all, all day. day long and now I'm like oh man I didn't really work out that much today like it, do I have to go back to the gym that's bad. also a thing too not a that's great- hard when you are so busy all the time training mm-hmm. I-, I had too much free time on my hands and with that free time bad thoughts started to occur truly like that was that's what it that is exactly to. what i yes you don't realize how much free time you have until you fill up all of your actual time and then when you are free it's just usually the negativity you could be doing more mm-hmm. and i have this all the time this is like what 75 hard has done to me it's bad stop doing it i know <laughs> no <laughs> no never but i get it yeah i mean it's just well, you see what you're capable of. And mm-hmm. it's not just like physically, but also it is productivity. It's so many different aspects of your life. Like what is filling your cup and, you know, things that are important to you. And, you know, if you have the free time, what are you focusing on? And for me, I started focusing on negative things that were not important that, but because I had been living in it for so long and not thinking about, I started to think about everything when right. I stopped. <laughs> Yeah, trauma, but it's good. We've come a long way. We really have. And my body dysmorphia has significantly decreased. I enjoy the balance in my life. Of course, I still have my days, but we all do. We're- but also, you worked so hard physically. Now it's time to do some of the mental stuff anyway. Totally. I think you've definitely been doing a lot of it. Yeah, so. yeah, definitely. It's a good thing. Yeah. Now is. we're really growing. We're growing. Blossoming. We're, we're blooming into beautiful flowers. Yes. <laughs> Tons of rain to support yeah, you. I know. You're right. Um. All right. I think. Was that everything? I think that was everything I wanted to ask. I think we really covered we touched on a lot so much well now we have to obviously say what we're going to say yes to this week yeah no it's friday so maybe for next oh so week, one weekend. of our listeners he asked me about this and said uh or he called me out on one of my yeses like i have to get better at it and i was like okay well sometimes we say things that we already said yes to the week prior mm-hmm. Or we're going to say yes to something the week coming up. I was like, which one do you like better? Mm -hmm. And he said the week coming up because it holds, it will be more accountability for both of us. That's fair. And that is true because. Well, what do I have? What do we have coming up? I don't even know. Me either. What is the date even next week or this weekend coming up? I snuck into the puppy yoga. (gasps) I'm happy for you. I can't wait. Are you going to take a dog home? Mm, probably not <laughs> is that my yes oh my god imagine you <gasps> show up at my parents house with a puppy oh, after they'll, they'll kill me they will kill you they will actually my dad will kill me that would kill you um i know i'm upset i can't go to it because i have uh the barbell class which i'm pumped about so. oh sick maybe i'll say yes if someone uh actually well i did say yes to going to home goods tonight oh amazing so that's the greatest place that's ever a, that's a plus that's, you're gonna that's come my home yes. with like a pillow and a frying pan <laughs> some curtains something we'll figure it out <laughs> anything random <laughs> that's fun okay yeah so yes is my puppy yoga okay there you go and i will that's an easy commit we'll we'll uh touch on that and see if you got a dog next week oh god they will have a friend (laughs) she's like get out of here all right guys well that was a real treat i hope we never have to do that again (laughs) i loved it uh but thank you so much for listening that was you know what it i'm glad we unpacked that you said yes to that i did actually that's a huge yes that was a big yes for me i know i was like kind of laid it on her uh, yesterday i was like hey we're gonna interview you tomorrow yeah it was good it was good so i hope you guys enjoyed that um as always we appreciate your support please like comment share send us the questions that you want to hear us talk about and uh that's it this is meg this is steph this is the thanks but no podcast